have a, a fresh culture of the cantaloupe strain. As far as fungus goes, this one is famous. A sample taken from a moldy cantaloupe that yielded a strain of penicillin, saving countless lives in the Second World War. A breakthrough often associated with the Nobel Prize winner Alexander Fleming. That living fungus is one of a staggering 15,000 strains kept here at a University of Toronto facility that now faces an uncertain future. The costs to operate the biobank are probably around $120,000 a year. We've reached a point now where it just it doesn't look possible to maintain this, uh, this biobank resource uh, in Canada. Federal grants dried up years ago, and Director James Scott says he's struggled to scrape together funding ever since. Preserved this way, uh, many fungi can last probably forever. Now, within months, North America's biggest collection of its kind could be broken up with fungi sent to Europe or China. A troubling prospect for scientists across this country. Losing this huge collection is going to, uh, uh, the impact cannot be overstated. Imagine that all of Shakespeare's works were suddenly to disappear. Importing living fungi for research can prove time-consuming and costly. Consider the deadly anthrax-laced envelopes mailed to U.S. addresses after 9-11. When Canada sought to produce a vaccine, Scott says the U.S. refused to export that dangerous strain. And all of this, he says, can't be replaced. There's no way that you can go back in time and collect those strains at the time they were collected. Scott even built a board game to raise money and never heard back from the Ontario government after sending this letter warning we have exhausted all avenues of funding. A century of research soon lost for good. Thomas Dagg, CBC News, Toronto.